the Joe Rogan experience. Do you spend any time meditating? I do. Uh, I'm not particularly effective at it. And so most people are that way. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but you know, Including years the ago, most effective ones. Well, years ago, a friend of mine uh, bought me one of these uh, transcendental meditation courses, and I was like, mm. oh, okay, I'll just try it. He, he, he spent the money, I'm going to actually go and do it. And it was kind of eye opening. There was a lot of what you might call woo woo stuff that was happening in the lectures. And in fact, the funny thing is, the guy giving the lecture, he did recognize me, and you could. I could tell how uncomfortable he was giving his normal <laughs> description because he kept looking at me sheepishly as he would invoke <laughs> quantum physics and oh, things of that hilarious. sort, you know. But I was like, I, I told him, I do you know whatever. You, this, I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to sort of mm -hmm. see what's going on. But the idea of allowing the mind to be in a different mode of operation, which is sort of how I summarize the experience. You know, if you're, if you're reciting the mantra in your mind and allowing that to be a sort of pedal point, a driver of how your mind is behaving at that moment, that's a very different way of being in the world from thinking about grocery shopping or solving Einstein's equations. Mm. And I think that to me is the, the value of it. It's a systematic way to put your mind in a different mode of operation. And at times, I find it very useful to move into that place. Mm. Um, what, when, you, when you started doing transcendental meditation, what about it was weird? Well, what was weird, number one, was doing this in this, in this group setting, which is how you start on this course. And moreover, it being framed in a manner that I had trouble aligning with my understanding of how the world works by virtue of the lectures that were given mm -hmm. to us for what it is what we were doing. But through the practice, I sort of found I'm, – I'm sure I'm, I'm just translating – from what they were saying in the lecture into a language that I'm more comfortable with. Mm. Um, and that made it less weird for me. Because sort of like what you were talking about, religion, just kind of cutting out the thing. Cutting out the like thing that didn't nonsense. make any sense to me and yeah. saying, hey, what is this really about? What this really is about is breaking the usual chain of thought that is 99.9% .9 of the time of how I live in the world and allowing my brain to have a chain of thought that is artificial because I'm sitting here forcing myself to recite this mantra inside my mind, but that's a very useful way of being because it's unfamiliar and it's novel and it allows my brain to operate in a different way. So when I translated it into that language, it all of a sudden made a lot more sense to me and became not weird at all. It became an interesting practice. And do you still do it? I do it when I feel I need it. So there are friends of mine who say, I cannot live in the world if I don't do my 20 minutes in the morning. Simply, mm. you know, that, that's part of my routine. I don't feel that way, but there are moments when I say, whoa, I need to do it. And based on circumstance, based on what's happening in a given moment, it allows a kind of mental reset if, if, if that's a, a language that makes sense. Um, and that reset I consider to be a valuable thing to do. Now, so do you do you do do you do this? I do. I don't do TM, but, okay. uh, but I do meditate and um, regular basis. Yeah, meditate. regular basis. Yeah. And I, I also have a float tank here. That oh, you I do like to use? Yeah. Really? Yeah, like a, a deprivation? Yeah, yeah. In, in this building? Yeah, it's right over there. I'll show it to you after we're done. Wow. Yeah. I can, like can I do it? Sure, you could if you want. <laughs> oh, shit. Have you done it before? I've never done it before. Oh my god! I, I, you gotta I, do I, it. I, I find it a little bit terrifying. Do you live in Manhattan? Say. I do. Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of them. There's yeah. a bunch of different float places. It's not terrifying at all. Really? Yeah. You just float, relax. And uh, but it's complete darkness. Oh yeah, right? yeah. See, because I have I have some claustrophobia. Yeah, and and that's like, for instance, I can't go into an MRI machine. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, totally. In but fact, you're I so even smart. Why why don't you get that out of your head? I tried. I got to tell you, really? I trained. So I have a desk in my office where it's only about like one foot high, and I'd slide my body underneath the desk, close, lock the door because it right. looked too weird, <laughs> and I'd stay under there as long as I possibly could just How to train myself, like fifteen, twenty. But, then I, but I get into the real machine and phew, really, yeah. My wife's mom is like that. Yeah, like she did an MRI and she's like, it was the worst experience of my life. I'm like, I did two of them last week. I, I totally, fell asleep. I totally understand her. I totally <laughs> really, like, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't understand why someone as smart as you would not recognize, well, there's just well, this it's, thing it's, around me and I can... I do, I do, but it's, it's like the irrational part mm. of being. I get in there, my heart starts to pound. Where do you I, think I, that I, comes from? Um, I don't know because it wasn't always there. And, really? it had, and it has gotten worse in certain... There was a time 
again, it's gonna, I'm going gonna, gonna to come across like a nutcase in here. Maybe it was that but, trip to Amsterdam. Yeah, maybe it was trip to Amsterdam. Wafted but, but your brain out. There was actually times when I couldn't even go in a tunnel in a car. The claustrophobia Whoa. was that bad. Really? Yeah, I was in a taxi cab. I had to go to New Jersey, you know, Manhattan, so I had to take the Lincoln mm-hmm. Tunnel. And as the taxi is approaching the tunnel, I said to the guy, I can't do it. I can't do it. And the guy says, well, I, I can't let you out. It's illegal to let you out. I said, you got to let me out. I can't do it. And I just opened the door and I got out. Oh, my God. That's yeah. so crazy. But now I'm fine with tunnels. So now I don't, I don't know what it is that, that – uh, Maybe you're too smart. Accentuated it there. Maybe you're too smart. You know, and maybe your brain know. is playing tricks with you and giving you anxiety to sort of... Uh, Shake it up the world. Yeah, and Yeah, maybe. Because you're maybe. constantly yeah. contemplating the gigantic yeah. picture of yeah. the actual scope of the universe. And, yeah, you know, but now, now I'm pretty stable about these things. So it's just MRI so machines where it's really close into your well, face. Well, you got to just um, do a lot of MRIs to get over yeah, that. Yeah, right, exactly. I'm sure that, that would do it. <laughs> that would absolutely do it. Probably, yeah. right? If you yeah. did MRIs on a regular basis. Then th- I'm sure you get used to it. But uh, Yeah, I just, uh, I just do a real simple type of meditation. When I, I probably am eventually going to take a TM course because uh, my friend Tom Papa, he's really into TM and he, he raves about it. Yeah, but yeah. I just sit down and I breathe. I just concentrate only on my breath. And, I, and it comes and goes, but I concentrate only on my breath. And uh, I find really good relief from that. Uh, yoga is the same thing. I do yoga. I try to do it at least twice a week when I, you know, oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That, there's a lot of benefit in that in the same way in that it's so difficult and in the poses, if you can only concentrate on your breath, just balance and concentrate on your breath, you'll be filled with activity enough with the with things to concentrate on, with the balancing of the posture and then the breath that it it, it acts as a, a almost a brain scouring. It cleanses the mind of unnecessary anxieties yeah, and a lot yeah. of other just But you've been doing that for a long time, yeah. or is this a reason? I was doing it, no, yoga's been I've been pretty steady for the last four years. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My wife does a lot of yoga. She keeps telling me that I need to do it. It's great. You know. It's great. It's great um, for the body as well. And I think the more comfortable your body is, the better your, at least for me, yeah. the better my mind works. Yeah. <laughs>